Hey guys, welcome back to another QX56 video. So today we're gonna be repairing something that I'm having intermittent trouble with and I think it's the starter. Sometimes when I go to start it, it doesn't start, it just clicks. And especially on a cold morning. So today's not a very cold day, it's actually kind of warm, but let's see if it'll do it or not. And it usually doesn't want to start about once every 10 times or so. So it's just random kind of. So we can see everything lights up, push the brake and hit the power button. Okay, so it started that time. So when it does not start, it'll just click and that's it. And if I just keep pushing the start button, eventually it'll start after a few clicks. So that makes me think it's the starter. Plus you guys can see how much miles I have on this thing. I'm sure the starter has never been changed, so. All right, and so if we go under the hood, we can see we have a pretty large engine. But with this model here, and I think all of them are like this, the starter is actually in the center of the engine underneath the intake manifold, which makes it very hard to get to not as casual as normal where it would be somewhere on the outside of it. So in this video we're going to try to take it all apart, get to the starter, change the starter, and then put it all back together. So and because this is the direct injection 5.6 liter, all of the newer Infinities and even Nissan, the pickup trucks and the Armadas have this engine and the Nissan Control also. So, so this should apply to a lot of the newer vehicles. But before you start working on anything, the first thing you want to do is disconnect the negative terminal of the battery which I loosened it up so it should just pop right off all right so the next thing we're gonna do is take this cover off and this cover has two 10 millimeter bolts and after you get those loose this kind of raises and underneath you can see there's two more bolts on the back there so once you get those bolts off this should just lift up revealing the engine and the thing's pretty dirty so I might take a wet rag and kind of wipe things down because we are gonna get really dirty because we got to take off this whole manifold here so i'm going to go ahead and clean it up a bit and then we need to start disconnecting things from the manifold like this intake or whatever these hoses and, and boxes here and uh, hopefully we won't have to do anything too serious with the fuel system or anything like that but we'll have to see all right so i got the engine cleaned up a little bit so i'm gonna clean it up a little better as i take the parts off but right now i'm working on this air box here so there's one two three bolts and then there's a clamp here and a plug here and this should come off okay yeah it is coming off but i have to get the wire off here so all right so the air box is out so the next piece i'm taking this off so there's a hose that goes right here and then another hose that goes right here and then this little hose that connects to here needs to come off and the reason you want to take it off from here is because it's all zip tied to this piece here and another small hose from here to here right here and then we're gonna undo this clamp from the throttle body and it should come off. And there we go. All right, so I think the next thing that should be done is the throttle body should be disconnected from the intake piece here. And the reason I'm saying that is because the throttle body has water connections here, I guess to warm it. And we don't wanna mess with that. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna unbolt the metal part from the plastic and just kinda lean it over and leave it right here. That way we don't have to mess with anything coolant related. And plus guys, you wanna be careful not to mess with that throttle body cause they're all electronic. I've heard that Nissans can be very finicky when it comes to throttle bodies. All right, so I got the four bolts unscrewed and as you guys can see the whole thing is loose already and so you just want to carefully move it out of the way just like that just kind of put it down so it's out of the way and these hoses will be out of the way so and as you can see guys there's a gasket right here so be gentle with this gasket that's what seals the throttle body to the intake manifold all right so it looks like we won't have to touch anything here we just need to unplug this plug and then cut it loose right here and then looks like there's another air line right there and another air line on this side and looks to be like a bracket that we need to cut loose back there but so far this is actually a lot easier than i thought it would be so here's the progress so far so we've removed everything around the intake manifold so there's actually nothing else that's connecting to the manifold so theoretically it's ready to come out it definitely seems a little daunting knowing that the starter is underneath this thing but now that i'm taking it apart i feel like if you have any kind of wrench time you should easily be able to do this so the only thing left are are the bolts 10 millimeter bolts that go all the way around you can see them all the way around the whole manifold okay so all the bolts are off and it is loose completely loose so it looks like it's working out really well now the only hard part was that very end bolt there's a sack of wires right here, a big pack of them, and it's kind of blocking the way, so it's a little bit hard to even get in there. So I had to cut this loose from here and 
gear so just so I can kind of wiggle it around a bit the rest just came right off no problem there really easy especially this side is no problem at all and there's a total of ten of these five on each side now when you do pick this up and move it around be very careful because on the bottom there are seals where the intake ports seal to the block so you know try not to move it around too much like this go straight up and out so I'm gonna attempt to pull it out right now see how this goes Okay, so there is a plug back there. Kind of hard to see, but you guys can see that there's a plug right there that we have to unplug. And then it looks like it'll come out, so. And here's our intake manifold upside down. So you guys can see that there's little gaskets right here. It might be a good idea to replace these if you can get some. But I think I'm just gonna clean mine up, check them real good, and if they look okay, I'll just put it back the way it is. So let's go to the engine side, and as you guys can see, it looks pretty crazy. But surprisingly, it didn't take much to get to this point. So you can see we have the intake ports and there's eight of them and what you want to do is you want to cover them up right away because if you drop anything in there it's going to damage your valves or even your pistons. So you definitely want to cover them up. Either stuff some rags in there or maybe get some tape and just tape it all the way through and I think that's what I'm going to do. And so what we're after is the starter which is really deep down in there and kind of hard to reach to be honest. So it looks like there's two bolts. One two that hold the starter unless there's a third one that I don't see but I think there's only two and then we have the plug right here it's behind that bracket there's a plug there this this wire we have to unplug it and then this thick power wire here that goes to the starter right here there should be a bolt there to unscrew alright guys so the progress is good but it was not easy let me show you guys what I'm talking about so if you look there are two bolts only holding the starter the hard bolt to get to is that one over there the reason why is because this piece right here is kind of in the way but I was still able to use the rounded wrench part and put it in there the hard part was breaking it loose and you have to be careful because there's such a small place to play here now if you have other tools you might be able to do it some other way but it's just tough to get to that thing and also they're really tight so basically what I did is I put it on the bolt and then I used a heavy hammer like a really heavy one like a small sledgehammer like this right here and I tap it and that's how I'd break them loose now you could use some kind of extension you know to get leverage but usually tapping it works really well so yeah now the starter is loose completely I can move it around so it's kind of moving around and this plug unplugged quite easy too there's the other end right there and this also came off quite easy over here there's a bolt right here with the nut that goes over it and that was a 12 millimeter so not too bad just definitely a little hard to get those big bolts so now I'm gonna thread them out and the starter should come right out alright and this is the starter so it does look like still the original one made by Mitsubishi Japan it does have a Nissan logo also on there so most likely what's going on is the solenoid here is tired and the contacts are getting weak and the thing about this problem is that it's so intermittent but then one day it'll completely fail or you know have a lot of trouble so if you're already starting to have starting problems then it's kind of a gamble to keep you know driving on it so the starter motor itself is probably fine because it starts just fine and it doesn't feel weak or anything it's just the activation of it and speaking about all the work getting to it you want to buy a starter that is somewhat reputable because you know if you can't buy the original because this will be quite expensive to buy you're gonna buy aftermarket buy something that has some quality to it and not the cheapest thing so this is medium quality I guess this company is makes a lot of starters aftermarket starters I and mean, it is brand new and they do all their testing and everything so the starter comes with this sheet where it says pass and it's all the parameters of I guess all the tests that they did the torque and whatever what not else so the last thing you want to do is buy a starter that's gonna fail on you either right away or shortly so hopefully this is a good starter and it's offered by premier gear and they have a lot of starters and they seem to be rated quite well so I went with this company and it appears to be the exact same a replica of the original so I actually got this starter on Amazon and it was I think a hundred and fifty dollars at the time I was buying it so that seemed to me like a pretty good deal and it's from a good company but as you guys can see they have the same plug as the original and everything looks to be identical in the design and how they're built so so I'm gonna leave some links in the description for the starter so check that out and if you do find a better quality starter, maybe put it in the comments. That way other people can see it. But this is the best I could find that was a good value. And it looks like it comes with its own bolt here that 
we probably need to remove before we install it. But yeah, so all we gotta do now is work in reverse order. So the starter is just gonna go down in there and there's nothing really we need to do over there. Everything is quite clean and fine. So I'm gonna slowly start putting everything back and if there's any tips or issues I'm having, I will let you guys know. If one thing I do need to mention is the fuel lines because there's fuel lines everywhere and you wanna be very careful about not you know dinging them or hitting them too hard you know there's some in between here because this is the direct fuel injection there's high pressure in there and they're all around and actually there is a plastic tube here part of the fuel line also that you want to really be careful and it's right kind of in the way of everything so so just keep in mind there's quite a few fuel lines everywhere so i decided to film little clips for you guys so the new starter is in and everything went fine the two bolts Tighten up the main power wire got connected and the switch is also connected and back to its bracket where it's supposed to be. So the next step is putting the whole intake back on and we gotta not forget about that plug right there which plugs into the back of it. So after we do that, technically the rest is just connecting back all the hoses. So overall this is turning out a lot better than I thought. All right, so far everything's good. The manifold is back on. So it wasn't too hard to put on except for that one bolt in the back. So pretty much the hard part is over. All we gotta do is put all the accessories back on. There are some water hoses with a mount that need to connect right there at the end. Vacuum tube here, another vacuum tube that goes across, and then this plug here. Go ahead and do it. And then also our throttle body here, which should be pretty simple. Just clean off the uh, seal and the other part. So yeah, it's coming back together really good. So things are really moving along. I got the throttle body back on. And then this contraption here with all the hoses that connect to it. And one here and then one back here. And also that hose right there. And also don't forget this clamp here. So the only thing we got left is the air box. And theoretically we should be able to start it and see if it works. All right, so everything is back on and I double checked everything. It seems to be back to where it was. I also connected the battery, so we should have power. And I'm gonna wait to put that on until I start it, make sure everything works. So let's go ahead and try it out. All right, let's see what happens. Moment of truth. All right, so it started, no problems at all. And I did disconnect the battery, so the computer is probably relearning the fuel curves and exhaust and all that stuff, so. So it looks like we fixed our problem. The starter actually felt more peppy, this new one, so maybe the old one was getting a little tired too, so. All right, so I'm just gonna let it run for a little bit. So I went ahead and put the plastic cover back on while it was running. So let's go ahead and turn it on and off one more time. We're gonna shut it off. Let's go ahead and start it. Oh yeah, I can definitely tell that the starter is spinning faster now. So it must be the old starter was definitely getting tired. Plus the solenoid was going out on it. All right, well hopefully the starter will be a good starter and I'm gonna go ahead and drive this vehicle around for a few days, maybe a week, where I'll be turning it on and off a lot and I'll update you guys then. All right guys, so I started and turned off this thing so many times and it's been about a week and I have had no trouble whatsoever. So it starts every time. So I'm pretty happy that that was my problem and now it's fixed. So now I have a lot more confidence that it's gonna start every time. Anyways guys, well hopefully this video was helpful. If it was, then hit that like button. And if you guys wanna see more videos of this vehicles and other things I repair, then check out the playlist. And if you wanna see future videos, then click that subscribe button. All right, well thanks for watching and I'll see you later.